Dynamic Shangri-Las. So back in January this year, me and my family went to Tokyo. We woke up very early in the UK for our flight, which is why we were delirious enough to be surprised the planes are big. <laughs> and I know this is such a cope because it was literally a flight to Japan, but 13 hours in a plane fucking sucks. Even cinematic masterpiece Lyle Lyle Crocodile wasn't enough to make it better. So I ended up watching like some other movie. <laughs> It's okay, but I just don't think it's gonna win any awards. It... By the time we'd landed, we'd been awake about 24 hours and it was only 1 p.m. in Tokyo. So, even though we wanted to get out and do stuff, we headed straight to our hotel to check in. Our room had this view of what could be like a driving school or a, or a silly car park. After a quick three hour power nap, I was still eepy and needy to skeeky, but we went out to explore. We found an arcade and a real Pokemon center. This guy was uh, trapped in the walls and nobody was helping him, which is actually pretty fucked up. So what are these stuff that I just kind of think they're funny? I can't remember, maybe a record, do Breakfast buffet, breakfast buffet. I had rice and cucumber and coffee and... So for our first big adventure of the trip, we travelled to Harajuku Station, sandwiched right between Meiji Shrine and the Harajuku Shopping District. After going through the iconic gate, it's a 10 minute walk through Yoyogi Park to the main complex of buildings, going over a bridge and past the barrels of sake wrapped in straw. They sure are barrels of sake wrapped in straw. Last time I was here, I was 15 and bought a charm for success in studies. I took that charm into every GCSE and A-level exam for like the next three years in a hidden pocket in my blazer. So uh, yeah, these things work. It was actually quite rainy, so we spent some time in the gift shop to stay dry, but almost as soon as we left, the sky cleared up and stayed clear for the rest of the trip. Heavy metal band trapped in this van was following us. After visiting the shrine, we went shopping in Harajuku. There was a very shiny Nike store, and in the Adidas store, I learned some cool new facts about microplastics. Speaking of microplastics, these were the tiniest little guys I've ever seen. They were so scrumply. We walked down one of the most popular parts of this district, Takeshita Street. There was almost too much to look at here, between the food stalls, eclectic fashion shops, horse heads, basements full of otters that you cannot take pictures of. For our last stop of the day, we visited the Tokyo Metropolitan Building. Entry is completely free, and you not only get a fantastic view of the city, but sometimes music. I lied, that wasn't our last stop. After a dinner so good, I forgot to film it. Me and my brother actually walked to a bookstop nearby called Book Off. 
It was opposite a pharmacy, which was good because all the walking we did this day fucked up my knee and I literally had to buy and wear for the whole holiday a compression support just to hold that broken bitch together. Uh, injuries aside, I was in book off on a mission. I wanted to find Jojo's Bizarre Adventure manga for friends. How hard could it be? It's only one of the most popular manga of all time. I'm not focusing on you two, don't worry. Yeah, I hate you guys. On day two, I remembered to film breakfast properly and it was so good. I got to use one of those jam things that you snap to spread on your bread and, um, yeah, it's as satisfying as it looks. We walked to Ikebukuro Station, not just to get the train, but to check out a couple of shops. I saw these gorgeous fruit pastries, but were still full from breakfast, so we left them for another day. Yeah, I'll remember that, because I mean, we'll be coming to the yeah. station a lot, won't we? We never went back. <laughs> Our first goal was to find a bamboo park, so we left central Tokyo and headed out to Meguro City. Somehow, I think we stumbled into a really posh neighborhood. I mean, look at some of these houses. The walk was longer than we'd guessed, but it really was worth it for this park. It was pristine. Dogs aren't even allowed to piss here. Speaking of dogs, we were on our way next to a familiar place for all the Persona 5 heads in the audience. Shibuya Station, home to Hachiko, a very good dog who- Is that the fucking heavy metal van? This is also home to Shibuya Crossing, which I actually got to see in action. Considering that this crossing is always painted as a manic nightmare, it was so chill. It's it's just a lot of crossings that are active at once, that's, that's all. Tower Records was our first stop, a nine floor music shop selling vinyl, CDs, merch, everything you can imagine. I suppose it could be anyone's hand, isn't it? Similar proportions to my hand. I can't even tell you how long I spent wandering around listening to something new. This one was my favorite track, and I think you should listen for yourself.
Jojo reference? We started day three at Toyosu Station to get the connecting monorail. This monorail runs a route all over Odaiba, which is a man-made island absolutely packed with stuff to do. But we were there for Team Lab Planets. I had to grab some free rental shorts to avoid flashing people in the mirrors, we'll get to those, and bargain with my family who I had forgotten to warn would be wading through water as part of this. You, you'll replace them if the bottom of them permanently expand, won't you? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Planets is technically a modern art museum, but honestly, it's more like an adult playground. The first big room with the lights and the mirrors is really special, as long as you don't mind getting stuck behind people taking pictures and not moving out of your way. In the second room, there were fish. There's fish! Yeah, it looks like there's something there. No, there. Oh yeah, there I think as well. That's just a person in plain black. These things were called ovoids, which is just the silliest name. The final room was partly outside, and it was just this massive space full of mirrors with flowers gently swaying in the breeze. It was unbelievably tranquil. For the first time, I felt at peace. Anyway, look at this little goober. What are you tripping on, stupid? Our next stop in Odaiba was a shopping centre called Dex. Inside was a really good Italian restaurant, like, really good. We spent £20 worth of yen for three slay pizzas with side salads and unlimited drinks. I can't stress enough how much of an insane grip this capsule toy machine place had on us for 30 minutes. The vast majority of souvenirs I bought for people were from here. And hey, I didn't find any JoJo's manga, but I did find some JoJo's capsules. That's how they get you. Who doesn't love collectible turnstiles and chairs and dumbbells and cement mixers? The main attraction inside Dex is Joyopolis, a Sega-owned indoor amusement park. This is the closest we got the whole trip to being inside an arcade, so we, we went a little hard on the meaningless object machines. This sleepy bastard does not want to move. Oh my god. Oh! Oh my god! Yeah, hopefully just push it now, right? <laughs> yeah, right? I don't know, but I don't want to ruin it. Oh! No way! Great job! I swear to god, I've, I've never seen you not win one of these things eventually. <laughs> <laughs> and then so, one to scoop. So, yeah, so what? Well, one to turn to scoop, see? Ah, yeah, yeah. And then once it's over there, you press two to release, and you can immediately do one again. Oh, immediately do one again, yeah. Because you've got like a lot of time for it actually. Oh, oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> press two to release, yeah. Oh! <laughs> hey, it's still going! I got the two! It's still going! Yeah! You've got uh, one second left. Oh no! Oh, I didn't finish! Oh no! But hey, oh, those are cute! Right. <laughs> Upstairs were a few Sega property areas, like Sonic, that I I hate to admit, but we, we ignored it. What we did try, however, was an interactive Attack on Titan experience, delivered entirely in Japanese, so we had absolutely no clue what was happening. Despite that, it was honestly so fun. The actors were lovely and led us through some rooms as if we were escaping a titan attack before one of them got killed off, so rest in peace, Alice. Seeing famous Attack on Titan character Alice get killed was really sad, so we went to the gift shop to raise our spirits. 
You know what they say. I can come across a very delicious cookie and I'm a good day today. <laughs> Finally done with Joyopolis, we were off to Ginza and if Harajuku a few days earlier felt expensive, this place was next level, very old money. I did buy some clothes from here actually, but um, from the 12 story Uniqlo, not Chanel. For dinner, we went to Coco Ichibanya for curry, but after a long day of walking around, I was left a little hungry for something sweet. At a nearby dessert shop, I got a green tea ice cream parfait with an adorable pot of tea. And I swear, it was almost as delicious as the matcha chocolate fondue that my brother had instead. To tell you the truth, this was absolutely my favorite day. Everything about it was so good. I truly felt nothing could break my peace going into day four. It, is that Godzilla? Ignoring him, day four was equally peaceful. We ended the day at Tokyo Tower, but first we explored the East Gardens of the Imperial Palace. I only remembered to film it the morning of our last day, but they had Canada dry ginger ale on tap at breakfast and it was banging. sweet walking to Ikebukuro station this morning, being our last time making this trip, even if we were exhausted. But we were on our way to Ueno Zoo with a mission to track down some pandas. Each of us got a different animal in our ticket and I was very happy to get the tortoise. These stuffed animals were really cute. Look at this tape here. damn I, I love this ugly little bastard. Gorilla Woods and Tiger Forest. Uh, I'm not here to play golf. <laughs> For someone with a fear of birds, this area was um not so good. Maybe maybe in fact pretty bad. For content reasons, I hope it flies. For personal reasons, I hope it stays very still. I think it's eating its own feather. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, so it's definitely an otter in a bag. And it's definitely in a bag. <laughs> I just can't tell how happy it is to be in the bag. I don't know what my brother did to this kangaroo, but it was pissed. First of all, that one looks dead. They will be. That one is definitely not alive. Second of all, they look like like tiny pieces of like chicken fillet, you know? Finally, we found the giant pandas. The queue was massive, but fast moving, which was sorely needed because as cute as these guys were, most of them were sleeping. Unlike the pandas, the otters were very much awake and very silly. For our next stop of the day, we headed to Nakamize Street. This is essentially a big food market in Asakusa, leading to Sensoji Temple. But I was here for one thing, and one thing only. Food. You might have noticed that I didn't really explore much Japanese cuisine while here, mainly because I don't eat fish, or meat, or egg very often. But desserts are a different story. This stall seemed really popular, so I joined the queue and ended up with some fantastic Mitarashi Dango. This area was really busy and full of tourists, but I can't blame them. With Sensoji Temple in the background and the lights of the stalls, the food, the souvenirs, the whole vibe was just really lovely. The next treat I found were these sticks of mochi with different fruit toppings. Actually, despite this and the dango being served on sticks, you weren't supposed to walk around and eat. So I stood by the side of the stall instead and then threw the stick away before moving on. Fun fact! This goofy building right here is the Asahi Beer Headquarters. For our last stop of the whole trip, we went to the Tokyo Skytree, the tallest building in Japan. The Skytree has an observation deck, but we were just there to do a little bit of last minute souvenir shopping. We tried to get some bubble tea drinks from the Kirby shop, but they're insanely popular, so had already sold out, and we left empty handed. It wasn't all bad news though. On our way back to the hotel, I bought a red bean filled taiyaki. It was freshly cooked and warm and perfectly not too sweet. And I honestly don't think it tastes like baked beans. <laughs> it does not taste like baked beans. You know, originally we were supposed to do this trip in March of 2020, but for obvious reasons that didn't pan out. It was a long wait, not just the last three years, but the years of saving up before that. At times it felt like we'd never actually end up doing this trip. And in the end, it was exhausting. All three of us spent most days in not insignificant amounts of physical pain, we struggled to find places for all of us to eat, and we still didn't do everything we planned to. Even then, despite all of that, in a heartbeat, we would go back and do it all over again. Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you.